Hey, welcome back to my channel. It's your girl, Sonya J. And I'm back with another Real Housewives of Potomac review, season five, episode two. I told y'all I was gonna come every week and I meant that shit. But before we get into the review for this week, okay, what the fuck was the airtime? Okay, like, I'm confused. I've seen a couple of my favorite YouTubers or people I'm subscribed to or just people even on my YouTube uh, algorithm period that posted like review videos to episode two like five and six days ago. And I'm like, wait, hold on. Cause it just aired on my TV on Sunday. And as I'm recording this, this is Monday. So I'm like, what did I miss? Now I went to On Demand Sunday morning before um, the airtime of episode two and the show was already there. So I'm assuming maybe they aired episode one and two last week, but it didn't record on my TV. And normally when new episodes come, it records on my TV. So like, I don't know who dropped the ball, but the ball was dropped. Okay, like, fuck you mean. I'm a whole basically week late to do this review because even though it claims it aired on Sunday, obviously other people seen the airing and reviewed it. So the episode starts out at Karen's house. Um, we hear her moaning throughout the house. I knew it was gonna be some bullshit. I knew she wasn't doing nothing kinky. I knew it was either, I thought it was gonna be a massage, but it ended up being her trainer. Okay, so um, she goes downstairs and tries to talk to Ray. Like we talked about last week, I guess there's some marital problems going on between Karen and Ray after they've been together for, I think she said 25 years, somewhere in that range. And um, with her starting her new career and then being older and ret he's retiring and she's kind of like stepping into her own. Um, it's been awkward between them. Like what? Honestly, I understand it. I, I'm not, I'm not surprised, but at the same time, I'm surprised that Karen's being open about it. So I guess it must, I mean, honestly, it's either one of two things, either it's really that bad to where it's been going on probably for a couple seasons now and Karen can't really hide it no more and something is gonna change and she knows it. So she figures I'm gonna get ahead of this before, you know, the other girls like Giselle's messy ass um, or Ashley um, gets a hold of this tea and pours it all at the parties. Um, so she just figured she might as well go ahead and be open with it and film it so that you can't spray her with her own tea. And I'm here for it, okay? Like, that's how I feel too. That's why I'm a very transparent person. Um, I mean, you're not gonna know my personal, personal, but I mean, certain things you need to know, you will know, and you ain't gonna spray me with my own tea. I will, I will, if it happened and I know it's true, I will admit to it, even if you try to clown me or gas me on it, because you can't spray me with my own tea because I have no problem sharing it, bitch. So it's either that, and this is serious and it's getting really bad and something may change, which damn, we'll get to that if that's true, but we'll get to that anyway, because I want to talk more about it. Or like Giselle, based on popular opinion, maybe Karen as well needs a storyline and she's using this fake, um, our marriage is in trouble just to keep her relevant on the show. Now, I don't want to believe that. I don't think that's what it is, but that's a possibility. You never know. This is reality TV. So Monique and Giselle decide to meet up to have lunch. <laughs> I thought that was a little funny, but you know, whatever. It's cute or whatever. It would have been more cute if we didn't know what was going to happen in the future happens. But because we know what's going to happen, it's kind of like, uh, gives. it's like it's cute. But at the same time, because we know this won't last. Um, even if we didn't know what was going to happen in the future, we would have still, pro I still probably would have been like the single last because knowing Giselle, Mo Giselle always finds a reason to hate on, <clears throat> I mean, um, finds a reason to dislike Monique. So I knew it wasn't going to last, but especially knowing what happens in the future, it's just like, <sighs> I like Monique. I like her. But it seemed like when Monique gets around people who are notorious and experts in being messy, shady, and sometimes outright rude and disrespectful. It's, it's kind of like Monique don't know how to decipher their bullshit. 
Like, I noticed every time, and this is why I said last week that I really didn't care for Monique and um, Ashley's friendship, especially because it kind of was fueled off of the beef between Ashley and Candace. Because Ashley is one of those type of people, and Giselle is too, but Giselle's notorious for it. Um, they're good at being messy. They're good at stirring the pot. They're good at instigating. They're good at that. Um, they're good at all those types of things that catty people like to engage in, you know, when it comes to like spilling tea and being messy and spreading news. And I realized and I noticed whenever Monique gets around them, even though I do like her, I like her, I think she's beautiful, I like her personality, she gives me authenticity. Um, however, when she gets around those type of people, it seems like she doesn't know how to keep her cool. She allows them to let her... She allows them to see her sweat. Monique doesn't know how to decipher when Ashley and Giselle are being messy. And instead of taking their messiness and their instigations as that, just being messy, instigating, she takes it like as if like they're actually trying to help her. And she'll feed into it by like engaging more in the conversation and allowing them to see her starting to sweat and feel like, oh damn, that pissed me off. Oh shit. And it's like, Monique, instead of you like realizing that they're trying to get to you or they're trying not necessarily to get to you, but to be messy, even if it affects you or not, it's just fun for them to be messy. Let's just keep it a real. Let's keep it a buck. Okay. Ashley, more specifically, Giselle. They both love a messy moment. They're the messiest girls on the show. Let's just call it what it is. And every time Monique gets around either one of those girls, she always folds. She don't know how to keep her cool and keep it intact and not let them get to her. She always allows them to see her sweat. It's like she, it's like with the example, with the Sharice thing, when Giselle was talking to her about Candace inviting Sharice, you, let's keep it a buck. If you are not new to the show, you know Giselle's a messy a little bit. She messy. And you could tell Giselle was just savoring a little bit and, and, and trying to dig at Monique and how she feels about Candace inviting Sharice and trying to like, just po just do a little bit extra, a little bit. Cause if that were me, I'm gonna tell you the difference, right? Cause I'm a transparent bitch, okay? Um, everyone, every person, male or female, could be messy at times, but I really am not a messy person. Um, but I am transparent and I will give you my honest opinion if you ask. If you don't ask, most likely I won't give it to you unless I really feel you need it and I really care about you. But for the most part, I'm not really here for un giving unsolicited advice, especially now in 2020. I'm not my business unless, you know, I'm on this channel or and it, I want to talk about it. Or, you know, it has something to do with me or someone I truly love and care about. And with that being said, if it were me sitting there and I was talking to Monique about that and I wanted to get some information on why Candace invited her there. And when Monique, you t when Monique basically said she didn't know she invited her, she was like, oh, she invited her? I didn't know that. I would have just been like, mm, well, maybe you should talk to her about your friendship then if she knew that you don't like Sharice. I would have said something like that and just kept it cute and boo. When it kept going, but Giselle kept going. She kept instigating. And why do you think that is? And, and I don't remember what she said specifically, but I watched the whole show. I remember she was instigating. She was loving it. And it's just like Monique always falls for that. Like she, even with the Ashley situation last season, it's like when she was upset with Candace for a bit, it's like it was easy for her to run out to Ashley and and also believe everything that Ashley was saying it and take it in the context that Ashley gave it to her because Monique, you know, I guess you could say she's easily manipulated. Now we move on to Ashley and we're at her house. Um, she has a breastfeeding uh, lactation, lactation consultation once a month because she has, um, or she had trouble breastfeeding and she almost gave up breastfeeding the first two weeks of her son's life. Um, sucks that she had to go through that. I can relate because I know it was, it, I think it's hard for every first time mother to breastfeed. And honestly, not even first time. Some women who have multiple kids didn't even breastfeed because it was either too hard and they gave up or, you know, they, they couldn't because they had to work or whatever. But um, I know like that was pretty much the same thing for me. Um, it, my problem wasn't latching though. It was just because I wasn't supplying enough milk, but that's because I took the wrong advice. 
you're young and when you're young, you live and you learn. But I took the wrong advice and I stopped pumping as much as I was and I lost a lot of milk. So after two weeks, I had to stop breastfeeding my son too. And that's also because I went back to school. So I couldn't pump as much as I needed to and still go to school. So I had to, I lasted two weeks. I'm proud of myself, at least I did it. I know some women who didn't even try sis, so. But, um, and then she also mentioned that she had, I can't pronounce it, but she had basically like an infection that um, made it harder for her milk flow to come out. So that sucks. And I always hate to hear women have bad experiences, especially with their first child. Now, her experience wasn't horrible. I mean, there's women that's been through way worse, but like still like, I always hate to hear that because it's like childbirth is so hard. And like we as a society, both men and even women downplay the risks and the scares that go with childbirth and not even just childbirth, but pregnancy. Bitch, pregnancy in itself could change you whole. And sometimes not in a good way. Ask me how I know. Then Candace and Wendy meet up to have a lunch and they had a cute little convo. Um, you know, just talking as girlfriends do. They were talking about motherhood. Well, Wendy is a mother. She has three children. She recently had a baby girl and she's married. Cool. Can we get a hand clap for a black woman? Okay. Especially a dark skinned black woman who is not a baby's mother but is married, ding, 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 married with her three children and has a doctorate, <laughs> period. It looks like Wendy may be bringing in some win through this season, but I'm here for her accomplishments, so nothing negative over here. Her and Candace, you know, just talking about that and Candace, you know, as we know, recently got married and she is... I guess you could say insecure about being a mother because she feels like she may do a horrible job and she's her mother's made mistakes that I guess you, you can say um, affected Candace in a negative way that she doesn't want to do to her children, which is understandable. Um, and I agree with Wendy, like don't rush, like don't rush to have a baby, do it because you want to. And of course your husband too, right? But more specifically, especially do it because you want to, because there are even women out here who will have children for the man they're with. Sometimes they don't even be their husband, sis. It just be a motherfucking nigga. There's a lot of women who will turn around and have babies with the men that they're with or married to just because the man wanted to or the man wanted more. And then see, when he leave, you stuck with him. So do it cause you want to, not cause of a nigga. And then we see the next scene that we're at Ashley's house and she receives a call from Monique about the invites. Well, they talk about the dinner and as well as Monique lets her know who she invited, which is a good thing. And you know what? I do agree. Um, I didn't mention this before with Monique on how she felt that Candace should have at least gave her a heads up about Cherise coming, especially since she knew about how deep the whole situation between Cherise and Monique was. Um, now, later on, we see Candace acts oblivious to it, but we don't get to that. So Juan meets up with Giselle. I mean, really, I feel like there's nothing much to talk about there. I mean, cute, whatever, like, because, <laughs> I mean, like, are we supposed to, I mean, okay, let's keep it real. I know a lot of y'all is excited for it, and y'all was probably hand clapping and pussy popping, and that's cute for y'all, but a bitch like me ain't excited about that. Like, bitch, y'all should have been married. Like, what is the excitement? <laughs> like, y'all are 45 now. And I'm not saying you can't get married at an older age, like, oh, if you're 45, you can't get married or remarry, but I'm saying, like, Bitch, I'm not gonna jump up and down for a, a woman twice my age remarrying her ex-husband that cheated on her. Bitch, why would I be happy about that? <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't mean to laugh at people's pain, but I'm just saying like, <laughs> half the shit y'all go through, I would never, I would never, let me, I would never allow it. Cause a pussy hole could never. So we see Candace took a pregnancy test and it was negative. Now, I will say this. Um, I understand where Can how Candace was feeling because at first I was like, and I'm going to be honest though, even though I understand how she feels and I uh, empathize with her in that moment, at the same time, I'm like, if the test was negative, why'd you put it on the scene? 
But I get it. It's a TV show. You need a storyline. You need to have content. Understandable. I'm just saying I wouldn't have done that. But I get it. Content. Okay. So, and I and I empathize and relate because I'm sure we all have taken pregnancy tests that were negative. And even though we wanted them to be negative, we at the same time wanted them to be positive. It's weird. It's like this weird thing with being a woman that even if you don't want kids, not for every woman, but for, I, I'll say most women, um, even if you don't want to have kids in that moment, something about taking a pregnancy test, like, changes you and it it, it, ch it kind of like changes your like how you want to move from here on out with having children and becoming a mom whether the test is, pre is positive or not your mind kind of like forever switches a little bit like okay now that I took a test and it, it feels more real that I'm a woman and this motherhood thing can happen do I want it to happen like am I ready um, and then once you take the test and it's positive, then it's like, okay, you got to make the decision. If it's negative, then you're like, damn, I mean, I'm happy, but damn, it's negative. I don't, and it's weird. Like, I don't even know how to explain it really, but I know how she was feeling. Oh, one thing I want to say real quick though, um, you know, later on in the episode when they are at dinner, they talk about, I guess, like Candace still has sex with Chris with condoms. And I don't really see anything wrong with that. I feel like just because they're married, that doesn't mean that you have to raw dog it every time. Like, especially if you're not trying to have kids, why would you do that? Like, Candace clearly doesn't want to have kids right now. Every time someone asks her, she literally says it. So it's like, why would she be raw dogging if she don't want raw dogs? Bad example, if she don't want kids. Like, and I mean right now. Like, I'm not saying forever, but right now. And I think it's smart of her to use protection because if she knows for a fact she's not ready to have kids and she has this deep anxiety and insecurity about being the perfect mom or um, being a, a better mother to her that her mother was to her, um, I think it's smart of her to use protection until she's ready. I'm, I'm, I, uh, I wish more bitches would do it. Like, I'm tired of the generation. And not even just this generation, but people in general, you know, with their delusional morals and values and their delusional thoughts and then like when shit happens that they can't handle or shit happens that's like whoa i didn't want that to happen i didn't expect that to happen then it's like well how did that happen bitch i wonder how it happened like if the girl said she ain't ready to have kids why would you try to encourage her to raw dog husband or not she don't want no kids even by her husband she don't want them right now so why would she raw dog him i'm just saying i'm just saying a lot of people feel like just because you're grown the shit in 2020 you ain't gotta be married bitch you can be a single bitch at 30 years old because you 30 bitch where the kids at i know you don't got a man i know you ain't married but you 30 so where the kids at and it's like bitch where are your morals Obviously, she don't even have a structured situation, so why she need to bring the kids? Yeah, sis, in Candace's particular situation, she's married. She's 30, but she ain't ready for kids. She psychologically and mentally knows and emotionally knows that. So why would she fuck up and fuck and get pregnant and birth a kid that she's not ready for and end up being a shitty mother. She already knows she ain't ready for it. So why I try to peer pressure to do it? I'm just saying like, I get that she's married, but that don't mean shit. If she ain't ready for kids, why would she raw dog? I'm just saying like a lot of the things that we say sometimes don't make sense. Like I know she's married. Doesn't change the fact that she's not ready for kids. So why would she raw dog? So she can get pregnant and have an unwanted pregnancy, an unwanted baby, and then end up being a mother because she was forced to. Well, not forced to, but because she knew it was the right thing to do to keep it, but she really wasn't ready for it. And then she ends up being a shitty mother, and then y'all gonna be like, well, why are you such a shitty mother? That's because y'all peer pressured me to take the nut I didn't want to take. And I the dinner goes on. Before we get to the end and how it disastrously ends, um, we'll start at the beginning. You know, like I said before, I'll say it again, Giselle's messy ass. She's messy as fuck. You know, instigation situation. That's Giselle. She loves to instigate. Um, 
I forgot specifically what she did, but she just was instigating. She was, oh, excuse me, just instigating per usual. And she instigates at the end of the party as well. We'll get to that. I want to talk about this though real quick. Ashley, I'm okay. Like, honestly, when she said that she has a tear in her anus, my mouth dropped. It did drop. Okay. It did. But not for the reason that everyone else's mouth dropped at the table, okay? And sometimes it really baffles me. And listen, bitch, I don't think I'm better than nobody. I'm not rich. I'm not the smartest bitch. But it really does baffle me sometimes, though, that at only 20, 26 years old, and I'm not the youngest bitch, but I'm definitely not the oldest. At 26 years old, I really do have, and I'm not even trying to be on no cocky shit. I'm really not, but it really, in a way, it actually makes me sad. It doesn't make me happy. It doesn't make me feel superior, but it actually makes me sad. It really does sometimes, and I have to block it out of my head. But it, it, it's, it's kind of sad and, and baffling and disturbing that at only 26 years old, I have a lot more wisdom than a lot of women that are twice as old as me. I mean, like, the fact, and we're going to get into why I'm saying that. Well, there's a lot of reasons why I feel that way. But even in this particular moment, when Ashley said that she had a tear in her anus, my mouth did drop. But it didn't drop because I was disgusted. It didn't drop because I thought it was funny. It didn't drop because I was like, ew, let's change the subject. It dropped because I never heard that before and I actually wanted to know more. I actually wanted Ashley to explain what happened. And I know they were at the table eating, so maybe at that moment wasn't the best time, but I'm just saying, because it was already brought up, if I was at the table, I honestly wouldn't even have dropped my mouth because I have enough respect to know that certain things are deserve certain reactions. And I know as difficult childbirth is, and even just pregnancy in itself, Nothing about that is a funny laughing matter. Um, and the only reason why my mouth dropped was because I really was surprised, but at the same time, I was in the comfort of my own home. I mean, I'm telling you, but I was in the comfort of my own home. But had I been at that dinner with Ashley, my mouth wouldn't have dropped. I actually would have just been like, well, okay, that's, it wouldn't have dropped, but it was still a little open. Oh my gosh, Ashley, are you serious? What happened? Are you okay? That's literally what I would have said, literally. Because number one, I've never heard that. I and, and comment down below, ladies, if you have heard it, because I literally have never heard that. I've heard of tears in the vagina, but I've never heard of a tear in the butt. Oh my God, like, wow, I, that sounds painful as fuck. Like, I'm sorry, like, I'm genuinely sorry that she had to go through that. Like, oh my God, like, I mean, I know she's okay and she's not like dying or hurting, but the fact that she even had to go through that and the fact that obviously it didn't heal and she's three months later, well, at that table, three months later, still with the tear. I mean, like, first of all, and I'm not trying to be funny, but like, does it hurt when you poop? Like, oh my God, I'm sorry. Like, that's, I don't think that's funny. I actually was surprised and I wanted to know more. Like, I honestly thought it was baffling and kind of like, insensitive and slightly immature in my opinion in my opinion that all these women who are twice my senior aside from candace wendy and ashley okay and monique but like even them included they're all like 10 years anywhere from eight to ten years older than me um like they they all were just disgusted or just shocked, but not in a like I'm concerned way, but just in a like, girl, you need to tell me that. And it's just kind of like, damn, it, it really kind of upset me a little bit too. Cause it's like, damn, like I, I hate this world sometimes. It's like, I hate it here. Like dead ass, I hate it here. Like we live in a society where somebody can literally tell you the most horrific story and instead of like feeling empathy for them and like trying to understand their plight, you just like, bitch, pass me the butter. I just feel like that's not it. Like I feel like, and, and, and a lot of people, even, even women don't understand, even women who have children, who have given birth, 
even some women who have had, um, I won't say like death experiences be, or almost like close to death experiences because most of those type of women who've had that actually know the severity. But there are some women who even have had like traumatic-ish. I won't say traumatic because, you know, I think women who really have been through like some fucked up shit trying to get their kids here get the severity of childbirth and pregnancy. But there are so, a lot of women who have five, six kids, three kids and have maybe a scare or two or tragic-ish uh, situations happen during their pregnancy or their childbirth but because to them they just figure like oh well I made it though they don't really understand and comprehend the true severity and the dangers behind pregnancy and childbirth it's like that shit is really life or death and it sometimes really pisses me off how minute people make it seem to become pregnant or to give birth I'm not saying that when you announce your pregnancy, people need to throw you party. What I'm saying is that when you tell your employer, when you tell your family member, when you tell your spouse, when you tell somebody around you, whatever, that, hey, I'm really not feeling good today. The baby is not responding to me well today or whatever it may, you may have, it may have you during your pregnancy. People sometimes don't take it as seriously because they feel like whatever pregnancy is normal everyone gets pregnant so you'll be fine you'll get through it even doctors that's a whole nother video i've even had personal tragic ish experiences um during pregnancy with doctors so it's like i understand and i didn't even and i and i I'm so thankful I haven't went through anything super extreme and my son is healthy, but like I couldn't imagine going through anything even worse than I have went through just getting him here. So it's like, um, and I've had difficult pregnancies. So it's just like, th that's enough about me. But what I'm just saying is it's hard. It, it's real. Like pregnancy really is hard as fuck. And it really, um, and childbirth as well. And it really frustrates me that a lot of people, even women, more specifically women, honestly, it frustrates me that men downplay it too. Don't get me wrong. But it's kind of more of a slap in the face when women downplay because it's like, bitch, you should know more than anybody. You should understand the severity more than anybody. And the fact that a lot of women kind of like brush over the true severity of childbirth or, or pregnancy is annoying because I feel like there's a lot of things about pregnancy and childbirth that a lot of young women don't even know and understand. And that's because a lot of the times women that can teach us or warn us about it don't feel they need to share it. Um, and it's weird, but that's just the world we live in. And I would get more specific, but basically my point is like, I just feel like when Ashley said that, instead of everyone being shocked and disgust they should have been shocked with concern and actually asked to see how she's doing and if she's okay i mean i understand it's a butt so you don't really want to talk about it too much while you're eating but at least y'all could have just said are you okay or i hope you feel better even if you didn't want to know the details and i just thought that was really insensitive and also kind of shocking and i also find it very disturbing that at 26 years old i realized that and these women who are like 35 plus didn't the world we live in. Basically, the dinner ends to shit. Not surprised, per usual, and who instigated? Of course, if you guessed it, Giselle. It's like, sis, but that's her role. That's what she does. That's what she gets paid to do. I'm Like, sometimes I'm not gonna lie, it does annoy me. And sometimes I'm like, Giselle, like, I get that they pay you a little extra to be the messy bitch, but like, Bitch, could we have just enjoyed one episode without you just being the instigator? Even if we had to have some investigate investment instigation going on in the episode, could it have been Robin that did it or Bitch, I don't know, Monique. It always gotta be Giselle. And if it ain't Giselle, it'll be Ashley. But usually it's Giselle. Um, and of course she had to, you know, pretend like she's um the head of the table and basically demand an apology for Ashley. She told Candace straight up like, 
me and Monique were talking and we feel that you, Candace, owe Ashley an apology. Okay, she's not classy at all. I just said it that way because she thinks she is. Um, and she thinks she's above everyone and I don't get it. But I mean, I I know why she thinks that, but that's a whole nother video. Anyway, um, and Candace wasn't here for it. She was basically like, y'all got me fucked up. I'm not going to apologize. I mean, before she got there, before she went there, she did say though that she does understand that her and Ashley need to have a conversation and that she would like to have a conversation with Ashley but at another time because now it's not the time. Candace said it you know properly I okay and I knew that wasn't going to be good enough because especially the way Robin and Giselle they both was looking like bitch we need more tea than that. Uh, I knew that wasn't going to go well. The girls want to show the girls want to be messy so they wasn't here for that and so basically you know Giselle and Robin a little bit too this time, but Giselle instigated a little bit more per usual. Um, and basically, oh, excuse me, escalated to Candace basically saying, fuck all you all. And that's all period. And that's pretty much how it ended. So I think the next episode, they're going to show us how the dinner continues. Um, like, honestly, I could have swore that the airtime for this show was on Sunday. So I'm hoping that there's no episode three floating around there that I don't know about. And I'm gonna be late for that too. So like, I'm sorry that I'm hella late. I dead ass did not know this episode aired early. It was supposed to air on Sunday and I guess it aired last, I don't know child. I'll be here for the next episode, I promise. And I'll be here for every episode after that. Okay, hopefully the air times don't get fucked up so I can be on time. But I will see you next week also. I'm going to be reviewing um, that race in America, a movement, not a movement. I'm going to say that again. I'm going to be reviewing that race in America, a movement, not a moment uh, episode that they had next after Potomac on Bravo. I'm going to be reviewing that next. So be on the lookout for that because that's going to be uploaded next. Um, per usual, I got a lot of opinions, especially unpopular ones. But if you're here for that, then go ahead and click on because you know I'm good for it, bitch. Like this video if you like it, subscribe if you want to, and I'll see you guys in the next video and in the near future. Bye!